There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. We've coined a new word, adulting. And no matter how you feel about the word, the truth is we all have to pull on our big girl and big boy pants and deal with topics we'd rather not talk about, like how to choose a guardian for your kid if something happened to you and why almost everyone needs to create a will. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. You have heard me gush and gush on this podcast about a company called Tomorrow. They're the first mobile app that combines a will, trust, and insurance into one experience. And they're on this mission to bring financial security to millions of Americans. It's huge. It's the reason why I do this podcast. But I'm also a huge fan of what they're doing. And I have absolutely no stake in telling you this. I have absolutely no reason to brag about tomorrow, except I just really believe they're providing such a valuable service to everyone. Plus, you can actually create a will for free. And yes, there is no catch because if there was a catch, I would find it (laughs) because I have been looking high and low to find a catch and I have not yet found one. So this episode is all about some of those topics that we don't want to talk about, choosing guardians for our kids, creating wills, trusts, 
all of these fun, quote unquote, adulting things that we all tend to want to avoid, but they are so incredibly important. So the Tomorrow Crew, they actually looked at data from tens of thousands of wills where a guardian was specified, and they discovered that women are 68% more likely to be chosen as guardians in wills than men. That actually makes sense to me, I think, but I feel like we need to dig into this to understand the why behind it. So I had a chance to chat with Dave, who's the CEO of Tomorrow, to find out more about choosing guardians and to triple check that you can indeed create a will with Tomorrow free of charge. So Dave, I am so excited to have you join us on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, We're talking about a a subject today, two subjects in particular, that most people are probably like, oh, man, I don't want to listen to a podcast episode about guardians and wills. (laughs) And yet they are some super important topics. And one of the reasons I really wanted to chat is you you conducted this survey at Tomorrow where you ask people who would they trust, their mom or their dad, to watch over children should the unthinkable happen. And it was really interesting. 68% said they'd choose women uh, as guardians over men, which it doesn't surprise me, but I'd love to know your feedback from that. Like, why is this statistic important? Well, it's interesting on, on a few ways. One is, uh, well, first of all, guardianship is this incredibly important thing that hopefully you don't need. Uh, sure. But it's this plan that says, well, if something happens to me, who is going to watch my kids? Um, and so it's a big question, but it, and it might change as you go through life, which is your, you know, maybe you choose one person and then that person moves out of state or, you know, right. joins a religion or leaves your religion or, or something. There's lots of reasons, <laughs> uh, votes for the wrong uh, political candidate. Uh, Who knows, you, right? Yeah. And then you want to make a change. And so that's something we've made easy in the Tomorrow app. Um, where we give our wills away for free. But this idea of like having a plan in place uh, is, is super important. And what's interesting is by making it very easy uh, in the app, you can just add people from the context of your phone and it makes a will for free. Um, we found that uh, something that we understood, which is women prefer women to be guardians. So if they have a husband, the husband's the guardian, but the one behind them, uh, that person it tends to be a mother, a sister, an aunt. Um, but also men prefer women to be guardians uh, as well. Uh, And so it's this thing where maybe it's the attachment of, in the event of emergency, we want nurturing. In our culture, we sort of associate women with nurturing, uh, uh, but also just general trustworthiness as well. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, So like what goes into to being a guardian and how would you go about selecting like who's the right person? Well, it's uh, there, there's lots of uh, and I can share my own personal history with this. But yeah. It's, uh, but there's a lot of uh, things that one would thinks about. But essentially, the, a guardian, again, very unlikely. Uh, but if something happens to you, who's going to love your kids? Who is going to look after their their education and their health, uh, their pursuits, their sports? Um, you know, who's going to continue on with the way that you had, you would hope for them to do, uh, is, is an important, um, those are kind of the main questions that people have. And depending on who you are and where you live, there's different motivations. Uh, in, in my case, it was interesting. So I'm actually a father of four children. Uh, wow. and those four kids, um, uh, we actually had selected my sister to be the kid's guardian. She's a little older than me and she has some kids and, uh, and, uh, she'd be great. Uh, but it turns out that my sister-in-law, you know, she was, uh, she ends up getting married and having her own kids moves to Seattle where we live and is really more culturally aligned with us. And my kids love her kids and her. And I thought like, ah, well, this will be perfect. And we wanted to, we decided to make that change to her just around really around the cultural alignment. Um, but I'll tell you what, we talked about it for an entire year never updated our will. And finally, <laughs> I called up my attorney who had written up the documents, which was the only time I ever met him. Uh, and it turns out not only has he left the firm, but he's moved to California, no longer practices in Washington, and then I have to start all over or engage another attorney. And it was, 
uh, it was kind of a, a silly thing. And so that was one of the motivations in tomorrow is literally you can like drag and drop people or add and remove people and then just print out your new will and sign it. And I think that's such a great point because for most people, the only time they ever see the attorney is, again, when they're they're drafting the documents, they never see this person again. They don't have a personal relationship with this person. And so I think it's easy to forget when something changes in your life, like, oh, I actually need to update that because there's no sort of relational element there. So I think having some sort of app where this is this is easy and intuitive it almost seems too good to be true. <laughs> yes. No, I, I had a, a business partner who, uh, on his way to his last day in the office before going to his wedding, uh, I sat him down and I said, you do realize that your ex still gets everything in your will because you've never <laughs> updated it. He's like, really? And we literally sat down right then, created an update to his will so that his fiance <laughs> would, would receive everything. <laughs> Um, you know, in case anything happened, um, you know, they're it, like left, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how we let, if you're one of the few, only 20% of, of Americans, you know, sort of young couples and families, uh, get a will. And even that group, it seems like the bulk of those are all out of date. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's funny when you say that because so many people are like, oh, oh, come on, that would never happen. Like, you know, that someone wouldn't forget to update their will when they get married. And of course, they're going to update and everything's going to be fine. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a CFP. And when I was practicing, that happened a lot of time, All the time where people, you know, passed away, unfortunately, without updating these things. People, some people that were that were young and, of course, this, nothing was, you know, expected. And all of a sudden, somebody got the money that maybe wasn't necessarily intended for that money to go to or whatever, whatever it was. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of head scratching that goes on. So it happens right. all the time. Yeah. Well, and part of it is, so it does happen all the time. And I just heard two stories this week from people who personally had, um, had that where exes who had cheated or were getting all the money, and it's uh, it, it, it's a tough thing, but also uh, you know life just changes, and that wanting to make these you know little changes, who gets what, who's you know with the, with the tomorrow app you can walk around your house and take pictures of art or musical instruments or your doll collection, whatever it is, and decide who you leave it to, um, and uh, you can change that. That basically you, you change your mind all the time, and so uh, actually being able to keep up. Uh, with uh, with all those changes, so they don't feel so money mentally. Okay, I make a decision today. I decided that my brother is going to watch my kids, uh, right. and then next week you're like, you know what? I've had a chance to think about it. I decided <laughs> that it's going to be my sister in law, and my brother will be the backup. And then literally, you update in the app, print out a new will, and sign it, uh, and then it cancels all previous wills. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, I love that feature. So I'm sure some people are probably wondering, like, how do you start the conversation with someone like, hey, so would you like to take care of my kid if something happened? Like, how did you start that conversation in your own situation? Well, so let me tell you that the vast majority of guardians existing in wills today across the country have no idea <laughs> that they've been asked to be guardians. Um, wow. They, the number, the estimates are between, you know, 60 and 80% don't know. And so people think they want to build up, oh, we're going to take you out for a nice dinner and a nice bottle of wine. And we're going to ask you this big thing that's so unlikely to happen. What's interesting is uh, I wanted to change that. So for me, it's it, whatever. For me personally, it was a phone call. But then we create tomorrow. And what people do is they start, you know, typing in the names of, you know, I, I, I type, you know, Shauna on my phone and pulls, pulls you up. Uh, and then I can opt at that point to just send you a, a text message that oh, says, wow. Hey, I'm getting my act together. I'm creating a will. And part of that's picking out, you know, guardians for Max and Mia. If it came down to it, would you be willing to help? I want to put you on this list of guardians. Um, and, uh, and here's what's involved. And you click, you get to learn, like, this is what you actually have to do. This is what it means. And then you can say yes or no, uh, inside the app. Uh, and it turns out, it's a new behavior, but it turns out that um, about half of our users send those messages. And our belief is that just knowing, knowing is going to make everything so much better so someone can plan uh, right. for the future. 
Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's so intuitive. It just, it, you know, I've talked about tomorrow so many times because personally, uh, I've seen the benefit of of what you guys are offering and just know how much money you're saving people. Uh, you know, it just, it really blows my mind that you're able to do this and put this all together. Uh, so I, I think there's probably still a lot of people that are confused about the difference between like, say, a will or a trust or like what goes in the will? Like what can you put in there and, and what doesn't go in there? Yeah. So uh, so in your will, a will is like a one-time thing, not in terms of your credit, but like if you pass away, it's sort of a clearinghouse, which is your, there's an executor who's in charge and their job is to make sure that everything goes where it should. So that that items that you have, you know, you get my grand piano and here you go and you receive that. And then there's money left over. Maybe you sell a house, you don't. And then that goes in and gets divided among the heirs in certain percentages. Uh, and that's what, that's what a will does. And you can put anything in a will. Um, there's a few minor exceptions. If you own properties in other countries, you should get wills in those countries. But for the most of us normal humans, uh, uh, <laughs> you can put uh, everything in a will. Now, uh, a trust is different in that it actually uh, takes care of your family over time. So if you're like me and you have kids who aren't 18 yet, or even if they are 18, um, uh, a trust would take all the money, which is you know a big life insurance policy I bought when I had my first kid, all my savings, and my investments, the value of my house, and it takes all of that and it places it in a trust. And then what happens is I have a trustee who's a very good friend of mine. He's also my tax accountant. Uh, and what happens is if I die, then he actually takes over all of that money. Uh, and his job is to, until my kids turn 25, he takes care of their health, education, their maintenance, and their support. So basically, they have housing, they have food, they have clothes, they have college tuition. And, and all with the life insurance, all the money's there uh, to take care of all four kids. And then when they reach the age of 25, uh, they get a portion of what's left. And then when they turn 35, they get a, another portion. That's how I've set it up. That's how you right. set it up in tomorrow. Uh, there's a whole theory. You could all just give it all to them when they're 25 and, uh, and that's fine or whatever age you want. Uh, but for me, um, you know, I, I think every American, every young family should have a trust, not for tax reasons, not because you're rich but that you need it so that you don't dump all the money on your kid when they're 18 and that you have someone uh, who's there who you trust to hold the money bag uh, and, and share it out over time, which may be different than the person who would be your guardian or other person. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic, and it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. 
millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. So we have an Ask Ashana today that comes from Faith. By the way, I love that name. (laughs) And Faith says... I'm in the third trimester, and I want to get myself and my partner on life insurance just in case. Any tips on how to best go about this? Term versus whole life, how much to get, how to compare, et cetera, et cetera. Well, first, Faith, congrats on your baby that is cooking away. That is so exciting. I love having new babies join the Millennial Money Podcast family. So I am excited and cannot wait to meet the little one. So I actually started my career in uh, life insurance and retirement planning with my father, who had been in this industry for, gosh, now it's well over 50 years. So I am a big fan of the benefit of life insurance, and I feel like it's this topic that I really want to make cool again. Was it ever cool? I don't know. But I want to bring a cool factor to life insurance because I think that The problem is that a lot of people just don't understand how life insurance works, nor do we really want to deal with it because it really sounds like a downer topic. (laughs) But it isn't when you really understand the benefit of life insurance. Now, is it for everyone? No, of course not. Everything isn't for everyone. But for most of us, yes, at least at some point in our life, life insurance does make sense. And There's a difference between the life insurance that you will get at work and the life insurance that you will purchase on your own as an individual policy. They work the same way. So it provides a set amount of death benefit. If something happens to you, that death benefit usually passes tax-free onto a beneficiary. Now, there are some cases where it isn't tax-free, but you don't need to worry about that right now. So the difference between work and individual coverage then is if you have coverage through work and you leave that job, then you also leave your life insurance unless they allow you to buy it out or keep it in some way. If you purchase individual coverage, then that coverage follows with you. It's not career or work dependent. So that's just a little difference if you're trying to decide between buying it through work or buying an individual policy. Now, I will tell you, insider secret, that a lot of the policies that people purchase through work, through their company, in my opinion, from what I have analyzed over the last 15 years, a lot of the time you're actually overpaying for that life insurance coverage. Again, there's lots of reasons for that. I won't go into them or bore you with them. But just a little heads up, though, if you pay for life insurance through work, you might want to also price out an individual policy because a lot of times an individual policy can actually be cheaper. Now, in terms of faith, It's important to know that a lot of life insurance carriers won't actually issue you a policy when you're in your third trimester, but they will once you give birth. Now, that, of course, is dependent on the company, and there are some exceptions, so you want to make sure you double-check that. In terms of term insurance versus whole life, I think what you really need to understand is term is great when you're young and healthy because it's super affordable. You're essentially renting that insurance for a specific period of time versus whole life or indexed to universal life or universal life that actually builds cash value. So the premiums that you will pay for that type of insurance are higher than what you're going to pay for term insurance because there's a portion of that insurance that is actually growing. It's building some sort of cash value. So I think you should first consider what your budget is because that's going to lean you in one direction or another. And then think about whether you're interested in a policy that grows value or you just want to get some life insurance policy in place. So if that's you, I'd really steer you towards term insurance. But there are some reasons why you might want to look at cash value life insurance now. 
I know that there are a lot of financial people that will absolutely stand up and poo-poo and ridicule cash value life insurance. It's not for everyone. Again, everything is not for everyone. But there are certain people that it might make sense to look at a cash value life insurance policy. It might make sense for some people. It might not make sense for other people. I don't know which person you are. So uh, I'm going to get off my soapbox. (laughs) But I just want you to understand that when someone blatantly makes a statement about a financial product or something to invest in, you really got to go, okay, I got to look at it through my lens. Like, does it work for me and my family? The answer might be yes. The answer might be no. So some of my favorite online companies for term insurance are Haven Life and Policy Genius. I will put those links in the show notes, but there are lots of others as well. And I would say generally, I would consider somewhere around eight to 10 times my income for coverage, but there are lots of factors to consider. Do you want to pay off a mortgage? How much money would it take to provide for your family if you weren't here? What does that look like in terms of dollars over a long period of time? Do you want to leave money to your child, et cetera? There are lots of things to consider. There are lots of great articles online that you can research and uh, really lean into to figure out what coverage is best for you, how much you need, and how you're going to position the life insurance to take care of your family or your child or your spouse, or your partner, or your parents, whatever it might be. So there's just so much information out there. Again, the main thing is I don't want you to be afraid of life insurance. I don't want you to think that it's something that only rich people have or that you don't have very much, so it's not something you should look into. I want you to be smart and educated about things when it comes to your finances because when you're smart and educated, then you could just make a good decision. And I think that that is really, at the end of the day, what we owe ourselves is just the ability to be educated and to make a good decision. Yeah, sure. So What if somebody, what if they're married and they don't have kids yet? Is a trust still something you think that is worthwhile? So typically in a trust, if you're not taking care of like a minor or if you're not trying to deal with some, you know, there's some tax related issues. For most people, a will will be sufficient. Uh, If you're single or if you're in a relationship, married or not, uh, then a will, uh, a will should be sufficient for you. Um, and, uh, you can ping us with questions on tomorrow if, if you think you might need a trust, um, or you could just do a trust and then you're ready for when, uh, when more things in life come. Now, I will say also that a, a lot of people are not getting married or are delaying marriage or getting engaged without right. a wedding date plan. Uh, and, uh, if you do that and you're building a life together, but you're not married, you're actually in the most, one of the most vulnerable groups in America. Because you could be together for yes. five years, right, Shauna? And if you die, uh, if something happens to one of you, um, then all of a sudden money's going to the parents and not to the partner. You don't have power of attorney to, you know, if something happens to the person where they, you know, end up in the hospital or have an accident, you can't make, you know, decisions or make legal changes to documents, uh, like leases, uh, without their permission. So it's a, it's a big issue, and uh, I think a lot in this audience would probably fall into that category. Yeah, you definitely could be in the SOL yes. category <laughs> in that situation for yes. sure. And so, I mean, that's part of why, I, 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 again, I don't mean to keep talking about tomorrow, but part of the reason we created that is because you might be in a relationship, and you might be a, a year into that relationship. Well, I create a will, and I'm going to leave some money to my brother and my sister, but I'm also going to leave some money to uh, to my girlfriend. Uh, then you break up and then you literally just, you could delete that girlfriend and then the brother and sister <laughs> now get a little more money. Uh, and then you just print out the new will and change it. Or that girlfriend becomes a fiance, becomes a wife, becomes you know a co-parent to you or the children that you create together. All those things, it just allows you to move through all the evolutions. Yeah, I, I, I think it's great. Uh, so there's still a lot of, I think, 
skepticism with technology and apps. I think it has enhanced our lives immensely. I think there's so many tools at our fingertips that we're, we're not even utilizing to their capacity. But I think when it comes to things like wills and trust, I was actually just talking to somebody about this the other day. Uh, and I mentioned you guys, and there was kind of like that moment of hesitation, like, well, is it is it legal? It, what do I have to do to right. enforce this? Like, shouldn't I shouldn't I be paying attorney like a couple thousand bucks to do this? So, like, what would you say to someone who's kind of in that like I, I don't know, you know, if I can trust this yeah. category? Yeah. Well, so first of all, let me just start from a place of empathy, which is you're you're asking, should I trust this? Because you've never done it before, right? Uh, and that's part of it, which right. is um, it's like. Uh, the first time you buy a house, you know, it feels so monumental, but it, except you're going to probably buy four houses in your life. And you've had car insurance since you were 16. Uh, but like you've never bought life insurance before and you don't want to get it wrong. And you do make a will and you don't want to get it wrong. So just started there saying like, of, of course it makes sense. And you want a little bit of handhold. But when it comes to, you know, can, a, a, you know, a digital, digitally created will be legal, um, let me tell you what we did. So first of all, we started with um, wanting to create, what are all the decisions? Create this beautiful user interface where you can easily understand the questions that you're being asked and actually know what it is you're deciding <laughs> to do. Then we engaged an attorney full-time. I worked with us for a year and a half. And she engaged 54 attorneys across the country who weighed in on all of our core documents uh, and all the decisions and all the logic and then actually made sure that it was legal in the state of Hawaii, Delaware, um, you know, Texas, all the states in the union who each have individual and different laws. And so you're not able to make a wrong decision uh, using the app. Um, we uh, and you, you know, you 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 have to leave a certain amount to a spouse, uh, things like that. Um, right, and then right. you, um, and then after that, uh, you're able to. Um, uh, if you end up, you know, you create your will and then you have another child, uh, it, it, it takes care of that seamlessly. And if you divorce and you don't update your will, it handles that seamlessly as well. Right, right. I think seamless is definitely the key word. <laughs> so uh, to transition a little bit, I, I, I have to ask you, you shared with me a money story that you have on a trip that you took to India. I'd love for you to, to share that story and maybe some of the money lessons you learned. Oh, I have so many funny stories from all my trips to India. Uh, but I, I guess my, my funniest one of thinking about it is, um, you know, I, I was leaving Bangladesh where I, I had lived. I I'd done a fellowship there and was traveling into the uh, north from there into this part that's like a very remote part of India called the Meghalaya. And I get to the border and uh, I try to cross, but uh, there's like literally no one working there had ever seen a non-Indian or non-Bangladeshi <laughs> cross at this border. It was just for like coal trucks to bring coal across the border. Right. And so it was literally a bridge that was one lane. And I, I just went and said, hey, you know, I want to go. And they said, no, it's not possible. I'm like, no, I know it's possible. Anyway, it took a few hours. They called around and finally some, someone said, go ahead. And they stamped my passport. But I walked across and I, there were no buses. There was no place to go. Uh, and we had to spend a little extra money to get to where we needed to. And so I woke up the next morning, realized I have essentially no money in, of any form. And right. so I literally just walked over to, uh, to a bus driver who was there. And I said, I would like you to drive me to Assam. I have no money. I completely hitchhiked on this. I like bartered from things in my backpack for like food. <laughs> and it's a gifting society. It's not a barter. So you give people gifts and they give you a banana. Uh, and we, you know, and everybody's happy. I shared all my, I had cassette tapes back then and I would like, like give them to the driver. He would play my music, which sometimes he liked, sometimes he didn't. And literally we're just drifting through the Megalaya, which looks more like Scotland than India. Uh, wow. and, uh, climbed all the way up to Assam and, uh, and there I was able to, uh, finally find cash. But I was, I was, I think a few hundred miles from the closest ATM. I love that. So like, like I, I would imagine that moments like that, I mean, I've had travel moments like that. I got stuck in, in Africa in an airport with no money, 
planes were canceled, couldn't find my way out. It was, right. The luggage was lost, it had no cell phone charge, credit cards were denied all over the place. I mean, you just, every like scenario you can think about. But I, I think about that situation and I learned so much about myself and like what I'm capable of without having cash available to me. <laughs> well, and so much, because I'll tell you what, the, like two weeks later, uh, I cross over into Nepal uh, and all the buses had left because the line at the border was so long and it was either sleep overnight in this ugly shanty town. Uh, and so instead I walked over to this uh, pineapple truck that was just piled as high full of pineapples as you ever seen. Uh, and I just walked up to him and I was like, and I basically talked him into giving me a lift. Uh, <laughs> and I ate the best pineapples of my life crossing across Nepal, but I would never have thought, Oh, I should hitchhike across an entire country. Um, right. Uh, had I not had the experience of ha- of being forced to do it because I had no money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite place you've traveled to? So I always love my travels in India. Uh, one of my favorite trips, though, uh, I I took my my four kids to Mongolia. Wow. So they were ages six to thirteen, uh, and we I have a friend who's Mongolian who's an amazing host, uh, and we ended up getting um, it was like. 12 adults, 12 kids, and like 12 staff. Oh my gosh. Cooks and drivers and mechanics for all our motorcycles. And we literally, it was like, I was built to me as a camping trip, but I would call it an expedition (laughs) because there's just like lines of, you know, four wheel drives and we, and trucks with all of our motorbikes. And we just went way out and went camping from place to place in the most beautiful, amazing country. You know, half the population lives in yurts or is nomadic. And it's so empty and yet so, um, so just rich. Uh, and I love every, every second of it. Um, and then we spent the last two nights at a five-star hotel, which was a very nice end to a camp. <laughs> right, yes. Where you can have room service and luxury showers. <laughs> Unbelievable. Go to Mongolia. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I haven't traveled much that part of the world, but everything I hear and, and from everybody I know who's been there, it's it's like life-changing moments happen in, in those places. They do. It's formative. And that's you know part of why I take my children to these places. They can have these hard experiences. Um, so and for you, so what's your favorite place? Wow. Um, you know, I think it's Africa. It actually is Africa, even though Ooh. I had quite a really interesting uh, a story or adventure getting home from there. But I went to Kenya and South Ooh. Africa, and it, it Kenya just blew my mind because Ooh. there were so many people who had so little resources, and yet they were so happy. It just was absolutely crazy. Mm. And then they would live in these like mud huts. It's really hard to explain unless you see it. But then there would be a satellite dish on the top right. of this like mud hut. And you're just thinking like, this just blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a total life-changing experience for me, for sure. Beautiful. Yeah. I just went to South Africa for a wedding and it was amazing and then made the hop over to, uh, to Kruger and went and saw the animals. And it was, it was very much a life changing moment to be out in the jungle. Yeah, for Uh, sure. So So summer's coming up and, you know, of course, other than somebody, uh, getting on tomorrow and starting a will, what would you say if you, if you could give people like maybe you know, one or two things that you think they should focus on this money, to, this summer to get their money in shape? Like, where should they start? Well, I would say the first thing, if you're in a relationship, uh, even if it's only been a year, it, it's time to start talking about money. Uh, and it's an intimate conversation, but it's time. Uh, and so if you can take time, not when it's stressful and when we're trying to decide, you know, can, you know, pool our rent together for this little apartment we just got. And instead, um, just actually talk about, uh, and it starts with you sharing, which is like, Hey, I've really spent some time working on my credit and I want to share this with you. Here's my credit score. And this is what it is. And this is what I did as a way for them to actually maybe share theirs back with you and then talk about budgeting together and setting some things. And actually travel is a great excuse as you come in summer, like, let's create a budget where we're going to do this and how we're going to do that and start practicing saving together for a purpose. 
Um, and do it all from a positive place because ultimately you're going to fall in love and someone's going to propose to somebody or not, but you're going to, you're going to go, you know, deeper and deeper. And then you're going to realize like, oh, wow, finances are the number one thing that's going to break us up. And so this should be our number one focus and we should start now and not later. Uh, and so I, I think that take these quiet moments, uh, and see if you can't create more communication around money. Yeah, that is such great advice. Well, Dave, this has been amazing. I feel like we could chat for so long, but tell everybody where they can go uh, to connect and learn more about tomorrow. Great. So yeah, come to tomorrow. It's the will is completely free. No strings attached. You can create it. We just make money because some people buy life insurance from us as well, but you don't have to buy it, but you probably need it. Um, (laughs) So just Go to your, go to the either the Android store or the iOS store and down just type in the word tomorrow and you can download the app or go to tomorrow.me that's tomorrow.me uh, to to learn a little bit more and download the apps from there. Thanks so much for checking out this episode and a big thanks to our sponsors that make this show possible. Remember to subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you never miss an episode. But before you leave, I want to empower you to embrace where you are today, the good and the not so good. And remember, nothing lasts forever. Just keep taking small steps every day and remember how awesome you truly are.